Welcome back to the channel, kooks. Are you guys stumped at what to do with electrical stuff? A lot of people contract this stuff out. We're going to show you how to save a lot of money by doing it yourself. It's really not that hard. It's intimidating, but you feel so rewarded when you finish this project and you did it all on your own. I'm also going to put links for all the tools and all the materials that you'll need for this project if you're following this video as a how-to. Everything that we're going to use is in the description, so check that out. So step number one is going to be decide where you want all your um, wires to go, where your battery bank is going to be, uh, all that stuff. So we've decided where ours is going to be. Now we're kind of picking places where we're going to wire. So right now we're working on the fan. We know we're going to have a sink pump, a fridge. So we're going to like kind of start running wires from our battery bank to these estimated areas where we're going to wire and power. So we're going to start doing that right now. Okay, so in order to get the cords back behind the wall and behind our insulation, uh, we got to drill some holes and we add this plastic conduit in there. So I'm going to drill one right now. So you'll start with a small pilot. Figure out where you want it to go. Throw your bigger drill bit on there and then make the hole big so you can fit your conduit down there. Then you'll grab a file and file down the rough edges. Alright, once you got it through there, you're going to feed your wires. Ideally, you want to paint what you just uh, cut and then you want to, so that you don't get any rust, and then you want to feed your wires through the tubing so that they are protected. Okay, so we've made quite a bit of progress. Um, we've wired a majority of the appliances, lights, and all that. I'm just going to briefly go over what we used. We used an 18 AUG um, red and black combined wire for like the lights and all the low voltage stuff like the USB chargers etc and then for like the more high powered items like the fans the sink pumps the fridge we got a nice 14 AUG um, stranded always do stranded wire for the van stranded cord and we're wiring and we used a lot of this corrugated plastic so this actually was all in the van. Some of this wire was in the van. We got to reuse it. So now at the moment, we're just kind of cleaning it up. All our wires come out here for our fuse box. I got them all labeled. So we've made quite a bit of progress and we're gonna to continue to make progress. So these T1N sprinters, it's kind of convenient. They have these little wiring harnesses and I'm just like tapping into them here with our wires just to keep everything nice and clean so just wrap up these loose wires with some conduit just because there's these screws here and you never know what can happen while you're driving so you know we'll tuck it in there nice like that or something we're still working on walls and a little bit of electrical here here's our battery box danny welded so i connected a ground cable with the bolt there, that'll come through here. The battery bank will be here. This is gonna go to the uh, charge controller. So I cut my wall piece here. I'm just working on like where everything's gonna be. It's probably one of the harder things. So we're thinking of mounting this here, mounting our charge controller here. So this will run to the battery. This comes down from the solar panel. It'll go into the charge controller. Yeah, and this is one of the longer processes to just kind of decide where everything's gonna go because it changes and you don't quite know. So you just have to kind of commit. Same kind of with the sink and all and the pump and all that. So yeah, we're gonna just put this here, put the fuse box there next to it. And we're going to put this wall on. So you'll notice we've been at different phases of the van as this video has progressed because the electrical, just the way the job is, it's not just like a one and done type thing. 
there's a lot it's one of actually the first things you will do in the van once it's gutted is run some wires for your van so you saw us doing that earlier one thing before you start is you're going to want either a wiring diagram or some type of idea of what accessories you want lights uh, a refrigerator if you need to charge electronics um, we usually go with a battery inverter for that situation it's a lot easier than doing a whole um, different wiring scheme for everything else so you need to know where all that's going to go and when you do decide you're going to have to run wires to each individual location and you're always going to have to have them all meet at one area so like all the wires come from all over the van and then they kind of funnel down this plastic conduit and then they come down here where a fuse box will live so you notice we have tape so what you do is you label all your wires and then you kind of just have them sticking out where they're going to live so once you have this done i mean this is step one then you put your insulation on so we have the video for that and then you do your framing your walls and all that and you'll see that video as well and then if you want you can paint it and then you'll get to this step you'll have your electric stuff out and then we are going to now jump into the um, battery isolator so we can charge while we drive and the uh, 12 volt battery wiring how to do a parallel uh, battery bank so that's coming up right now okay so wiring everything in parallel um why you might ask well we have a hundred amp hour batteries times three so we want to get 300 amp hours out of this system but keep it at 12 volt so we want the 12 volt um, system at 300 amp hours we could wire it in a series instead but instead that would give us 36 volts at 100 amp hour so in that case we don't need that we want the 12 volt and we want uh, a large battery bank 300 amps should be good for our fridge to be running consistently um, hot days having that fan the fridge on max uh, all that stuff we should be more than good with that i will note that we have the exact same um, battery bank and electronic system in our van that we live in so if you'd like to just jump straight into it the links for those videos will be up here and there's there's quite a bit so you can get into this project now without having to wait another week for us to get to the next step so we got started on one of our first uh, metal projects of the entire van build and that is our battery box so this will be bolted to the floor it fits our batteries in there and it has a uh, thread on it and it also has a plate and we'll be able to sandwich our batteries in nice and secure to the van. So this is a great um, little thing Danny made. So we're gonna be welding a lot more here in the project. So just you wait, we're doing all of our cabinet frames and all that stuff out of steel. So. And it all started with that. And it all started with this battery box. Here we have uh, three 100 amp hour AGM batteries and we are going to wire them parallel. So I have, I have a video showing now of me pre-cutting all these and crimping and putting the heat shrink on. So this is six gauge wire. Yeah, you're going to cut it and then you're going to rip the insulation off. Then you're going to crimp on your battery terminals. And we're going to have try to have the links for all this stuff in the description then you're just going to heat shrink i just used a hair dryer and then you're going to just each individual one i'm not going to do it now but you're just going to chain each terminal together with these pre-cuts like this and like this and then in the van you have to ground the battery and i have a ground cable in the van which we are going to show you right now here is the ground for the van and it goes into and i drilled a hole in the body of the van i sanded it very well 
uh, I basically had the grinder, I got it down to metal, and then I made a connection to the uh, van via a terminal end and a nut and bolt and washer. So I have a really solid connection on there with a lock washer and a nylock lock on the, or not a nylock, a normal metal uh, nut on the back. And once we put the batteries in, we'll test that ground connection. I'll show you how to do it. And that will be in the next video as well. All right, so now we are wiring our battery isolator. I'm using some extra cord that came with the van. And we're under the van. There is a pre-existing hole. I'm running this six odd cord. And I'm just putting this plastic conduit around it. And now I'm just working my way towards the battery from the middle of the van over here. So you saw me under the van running this wire. It is our battery isolator. So I have an inline fuse on here. I believe it is a, it is a 40 amp fuse. And that goes from here underneath the van. And I will show you where it comes out and hooks into the battery and how. All right, here we have the battery doctor 12 volt um, 150 amp battery isolator and that just is going I'm gonna put some tape here and just tape it right there with some nice tape some double-sided tape and what I have coming out of it is some more thick uh, six gauge wire the battery terminal there that is going to connect to my power and this here is my ground and I will ground that to the van via one of these bolts here, here, this one here. So I'm gonna ground the system, the battery isolator, to the bolt and I will power via the battery terminal here. The battery wire here, it comes from the um, isolator and this goes to the battery. This one goes under the car. You saw me in a last episode underneath running the wire, that comes up here. If you saw that blue light just turned off, that just meant that it basically kicked off the charging. Um, I don't remember the voltage, it's about 12.9 or something, it kicks off. And I turned my lights on just to get that process to happen faster. So there's a blue light, it'll turn on and it should turn off. If it doesn't turn off, it's still like charging, you gotta give it some time and it will eventually kick off. Turn your lights on or turn your radio on to speed that process up. But yeah, battery isolator success. The ground is just right there. And that runs off the unit. Thanks always for watching. Um, I hope all this was helpful. Thank you for the comments in the past videos. Uh, it really helped us jump to these videos and address everything we need to address. So keep it coming. Like and subscribe. If you like the videos, uh, give it a thumbs up. And we will be dropping the videos every Sunday. So next Sunday, we are going to be jumping into a whole new topic. We're going to be working on um, putting together all of our cabinetry. So we're going to be welding some cabinet frames. And we're excited to get into this. This is something new for us. So tune in and we'll have that next Sunday.